Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our famous code today. Ratio of CKMB to CK total can predict MI if it is at a specific range. Is that true or false? We remember the fourth universal definition of MI in the AC guidelines 2018. It defined myocardial injury as evidence of elevated cardiac troponin with at least one value above the 99th percentile and is considered to be acute injury if it is detectable rise and or fall in the cardiac troponin values. Acute myocardial infarction itself is defined as acute myocardial injury with at least one of the following, either symptoms of myocardial ischemia, new ischemic ECG changes, development of pathological Q wave in surface ECG, imaging evidence of new loss of viable myocardium or new segmental wall motion abnormality in a pattern consistent with ischemic etiology of a specific territory, or identification of coronary thrombus by angiography or autopsy. We have two types of MI, either STEMI or non-STEMI, so it is an ECG classification based on presence or absence of ST elevation rather than the presence or absence of pathological Q wave like before because we know that pathological Q wave can occur in either types. So what are the cardiac markers that may arise in MI? Cardiac troponin is the most famous and most specific. CKMB is the second most common marker to be used in clinical practice. We have also LDH, which usually start to rise after 12 hours, AST rather than ALT, because ALT is specific for the liver, but AST is not specific for liver, so it can rise in MI, and the myoglobin. Usually you focus on cardiac troponin and CKMB in our clinical practice, but troponin is the first choice, of course. Regarding troponin, it starts to rise after one hour if we are using the high sensitivity troponin assay or sometimes after three to four hours if we are using the ordinary assay to measure the troponin values. Usually it normalizes after 14 days. Troponin I is more specific than troponin T and it is common to detect circulating level of cardiac troponin sometimes in healthy individual. That's why we don't depend on just one set. We depend on at least two sets or more to detect a rise or fall to diagnose MI. If we compare standard troponin assay with the high sensitivity troponin assay, of course, the advantages are going with the high sensitivity troponin assay regarding higher negative predictive value for acute MI, reduction of the troponin blind interval, as here the rise of troponin starts after one hour from the onset of chest pain rather than three to four hours, result in 4% absolute and 20% relative increase in the detection of type 1 MI and decrease in diagnosis of just unstable angina, associated with twofold increase in the detection of type 2 MI, which is caused by oxygen supply and demand mismatch, and elevation beyond five folds upper reference limit have high predictive value for type 1 MI. That's why high sensitivity troponin are better to be used in our clinical practice to improve the accuracy of detection of MI. But if we talk about the advantage of troponin, we need to mention some caveats or warning regarding the use of troponin. It should be used in conjunction with the clinical information regarding the character of chest pain ECG in order to decide whether it is significant or not, or there may be some criteria in the ECG that decide to go for urgent revascularization without waiting for the troponin to rise. Also, in patient presenting very early, less than one hour from the onset of chest pain, the second troponin should be obtained at three hour interval due to the time dependency of troponin release in order whether to decide this patient can be discharged or not. Also, serial troponin testing is necessary if clinical suspicion is still high or the patient develops recurrent chest pain. So just I don't discharge the patient just from one set of normal troponin. I may need to have another test in order to reassess the patient whether he needs CCU admission or not. These are famous examples about conditions other than MI that can be associated with troponin elevation and that's why we need to have serial testing and to assess the troponin in conjunction with the character of chest pain and also with the serial ECGs. And this diagram was released in the 2020 AC guidelines of non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome and it divides the category of patient according to the results of troponin whether they can be discharged because we rolled out anginal pain or they need to be admitted into CCU due to a high troponin result or in other cases I need to admit the patient to a ward in order to follow up his serial results. What about the CKMB if we compare it to troponin? 
It usually starts to rise after 3 to 4 hours from the onset of myocardial infarction. Usually it normalizes within 4 to 5 days, and this is a shorter duration than troponin, which may normalize after about 10 days. It can be used as an alternative to troponin if it is not available, because it is less specific than troponin, but it can be used as an alternative. And its main advantage over troponin is the detection of free infarction because it normalizes earlier than troponin. What about the CK total? It is completely non-specific, and its only value is that if it is normal and CKMB is significantly elevated, we need to check them again, or better to check troponin. And regarding the question of our video today, what about the ratio of CKMB to CK total? Sometimes we were taught by our senior colleagues that a ratio up to 25 is suggestive of MI, whereas a ratio more than 25 is against MI. What about this? Is there any role for the ratio of CKMB to CK total to roll in or roll out MI? There is no valid evidence so far that there is a certain range or value of CKMB CK total ratio to be more suggestive of MI and another value is against. Maybe some of the, our senior colleagues may see some ratios in which they find that the patient had truly MI when they enter the coronary angiography and other ratios that when they scheduled the patient to coronary angiography they didn't find any evidence of infarction but so far there is no strong evidence to validate a specific ratio above which the ratio is suggestive of myocardial infarction and below which it is not suggestive or it is against myocardial infarction. So if you want to use a cardiac biomarker to diagnose or exclude MI, please choose troponin. It is the best cardiac biomarker for diagnosis. When do we use CKMB? Only if troponin is not available at our hospital and to be used to detect reinfarction in some cases. And please depend on the CKMB only without depending on the ratio of CKMB to CK total. So regarding the scope of the ratio of CKMB to CK total, there is no evidence for this. The ratio does not help in diagnosis or ruling out MI. And the hallmark in the diagnosis of myocardial infarction is the detection of rise or fall in the cardiac troponin. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.